Welcome back to Real Terms for AI on the Road. Today we're with Zach Akil, one of our esteemed demo builders and developer advocates for agents at Google Cloud. Zach, first question, what is an agent? Oh, that's a, that's a good question. Uh, my opinion of what an agent is, is a program that decides what tool to use to solve a problem. And I think it's very commonly confused or maybe misused for things that are maybe pipelines. Like if you know that you're gonna give an AI and it's gonna do step one, then step two, then step three, mm -hmm. I don't think that's an agent. I don't think it's a good use case of an agent. It's more if you wanna give an AI a task and you don't know what tools should be used during the task, then that's an agent where it's actually deciding, actually in this case, I should do this thing. So not a pipeline, an agent. Okay. We're actually pretty close. Yeah, no, we're that. close on that, yeah. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about, you know, what's it like teaching folks about agents or building demos that explain agents to folks? Like, have you come up with any tips? Have you found anything that really helps folks get it? That's a good question. I think there's a lot of opinions about agents. Because again, because, because of the definition, everyone kind of has different definitions. So teaching people, I like to take sort of the more practical approach in terms of, first of all, think of it with the problem in the first place. And then before you even touch agents or AIs, like, do you even need the technology in the first place? Because we get a lot of people, it's a very exciting topic, but a lot of people are very excited to use the technology and they kind of forget about solving the original problem. So I think when people first take a step back and be like, okay, cool technology, but let's think about the problem first. And if the agentic workflow or agents is actually the right approach, then we can go into it. So I think a lot of people, especially with all the excitement with the new technology, need to take a step back and think more practically. Sometimes right. the spreadsheet's the solution. So let's say we're going to build an agent, like we have that use case. Okay. What's like the two coding tips and tricks that you've, you've learned going through this? You're like, I wish I would have known that when I first started this to get going through it. Uh, so there's a thought process that I find works really well for okay. me. Think of the agent as a very competent intern. Okay. You want to make sure, you want to be as empathetic as possible, make sure that you have given it all the tools and context it needs to solve that problem. Okay. So treat it like that. So make sure, does it have the right source material to solve the problem? Yeah. Does it have the ability, so if it's got tools set up, so do those tools actually enable it to solve the problem the way you need it to solve? So it's all about thinking about, how do I set this agent up for success? How does it have all the right context and have all the right tools to solve the problem? So. Treat it like an intern, and usually that's a good way of thinking about it. Awesome. So, changing topics slightly. What are your thoughts on vibe coding? I have a lot of thoughts. I have a lot of thoughts, and this was one of my, like, when I first got into teaching people about LLMs and practical use cases for it, my main thing was the outputs are going to be the most valuable if you're in a position to judge if they're correct or not. And I actually saw a lot of people who were doing generated code and the people who were having a lot of success with it were the experienced coders. Getting it to write code that they actually already knew how to write, they just wanted to write a bit faster. And the people that were struggling with it were maybe the people who didn't know that language. So a lot of students were tripping up and getting it to generate code that they didn't understand. So when it comes to vibe coding, I actually think the term vibe coding is the more dangerous one. It's the generating code that you don't fully understand. Fortunately, AIs are getting better. You are able to take that leap of faith more successfully. Like I'm able to get it to generate some like Go or C++ for me and it actually works. Yeah. So that's when I feel like I'm vibing. But when I'm doing some really deep debugging like on a language I actually know, but I'm getting it to help me with some things, I like to think about it as AI pair programming where we're, yep. both, yep. we're both on yep. the same level. But when I'm just like, actually, can you just generate this for me? And I don't want to read it. That's what I'm vibing. That's awesome. I love the, the difference there between the, the kind of AI as a teammate versus like, I just got to get this done. Like, please help me out. <laughs> kind of like phoning a friend like you for Asia. Exactly. <laughs> please do it. Please don't let me have to debug it. That's what I'm by. Awesome. All right. We always do with happy prompting. So happy prompting on three. All right. One, two, three. Happy prompting. <laughs> <laughs>